Hey everybody. All right. So we are at the last class or the last lecture for the last class. So we're going to be doing the integumentary system today. Um, at the beginning of a lot of, of, a lot of classes, uh, I dropped this for a lot of the online lectures, but I thought I'd bring it back for this one last one. Uh, we'll do a little bit of history or a little bit of literature or something. The reason I did that was really to uh, just remind everybody that uh, although we're working on anatomy, this is not everything in life. And it um, doesn't matter if you're good or bad at anatomy, um, it doesn't define you. So don't let um, this course define you either as good or bad, either way. So, or in the middle. Um, we're all complex beings and we're all have a um, have purpose in life. So with that, I thought I'd leave you with a little excerpt from uh, a really great book called uh, The Little Prince or Le Petit Prince um, by Antoine uh, de Saint-Exupéry. And uh, if you don't know the story, um, I'd encourage you to go read it. Um, it's a, a story about a, a little prince and he travels around to all these different worlds and he encounters all these different um, well, beings, uh, they're all pretty normal to us, and uh, but he, but they're all new to him. And one of the things he comes across uh, in, his, in his travels is a single rose, and he finds this rose, and he thinks this rose is the most special thing in the world, because in the, or in, that he's ever seen, um, and he, because he's never seen one before, and it's the only one he sees. And then he um, says goodbye to his rose and uh, continues on his travels. And, he, and it, as he's going, he sees a whole field of roses and he realizes his rose was not that special because it was the same as all the other roses. Um, so uh, so he's, he gets depressed about this. And so he's coming along, he comes along and he meets the fox. And this uh, sequence here, or this excerpt here is uh, what I think is one of the most uh, important parts of the whole book. Um, because he says to the, to the fox, um, I've seen this and it's, it, I saw my rose and then I saw a whole bunch of other ones. I realized it wasn't that special. And the fox says to him, uh, says, leave me and go back and look at the roses again. You'll understand that yours is the only rose in all the world and then come back to say goodbye and I'll make you the gift of a secret. So the little prince does that. He goes back and says goodbye to his rose for the final time. And then he returns to the fox and he says, uh, and then he's to say goodbye to the fox. He says, goodbye. And the fox says, adieu, adieu, uh, de la renard. And he says, here's my secret. Voici mon secret. Il est très simple. On ne voit bien qu'avec le coeur. Les essentiels est invisible pour les yeux. Which means, you understand, um, well, here's my secret, said the fox. It's very simple. One sees well only what the heart, the essential, is invisible to the eyes. It's the time that you spent with your rose that makes your rose so important. You have become responsible forever for what you have tamed. And what he meant by tamed was um, he got to know the rose and uh, and he'd, uh, he thought the rose was, was very special. So that um, the time that he spent with that rose was the most important thing. So, so just remember um, uh, that other things in life are more important. Uh, this is important. This class is important, but your other classes are important too. And other things in your life are important too. So never forget that uh, there's a lot of important things in life. And so pay attention to all of them. Anyway, um, so there you go. There's Le Petit, Le Petit Prince. And if you, and I encourage you to go read the book sometime. It is available in English. <laughs> or if you can read French, it's available in French too. It was written in French originally. So, all right. Next slide. Okay, so we're going on to the integumentary system. And the integumentary system, what is that? Well, that's the uh, in, in the integument, which, <laughs> so that doesn't tell you much. Um, it's the covering, it's the whole body covering, the covering that goes around your whole body, it's the skin that goes around and covers, protects, um, defends uh, the body, keeps things out of your body. It includes uh, some organs. Um, so the um, so the skin is one of the organs, hair, nails, uh, sweat, and sebaceous glands, and there's some muscle associated and some nervous tissue that's associated with this. Uh, we'll talk about some of the receptors uh, that are in the skin as well later on in this lecture. So um, you have a protective barrier is what it provides. Uh, there are cutaneous sensory receptors. So you have a oops here we go protective barrier. You have cutaneous sensory receptors. 
you produce vitamin, or it helps produce vitamin D, actually it helps convert vitamin D to an active form. And it's important to regulating body temperature, sweat, you've talked, you know, you know about sweat, obviously, uh, and that helps decrease your, uh, your body temperature in the summertime when you start sweating or if you're exercising. And you know, also uh, plays a, a little role in excretion and a little bit role in absorption. And also the, ex the excretion role also helps acidify the surface of the skin a little bit so it makes it a little less hospitable to bacteria. It's an organ, uh, skin is an organ because it has many types of tissues working together to perform specific functions. So it's called, also called the cutaneous membrane or the integument. Okay, next slide. So major divisions of the skin. Uh, there are two divisions of the skin. There's the epidermis, which is the uh, keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. I know you're, you probably like start shivering when I said those, those words um, from way back in the tissues lecture. But epidermis is on the top and the dermis is deep. So epi uh, is a superficial, epi meaning above, and dermis is the deep, the deep layer of the skin. And then beneath the skin, you have the hypodermis. So we have the epidermis and the dermis. So those are skin, okay? Now the hypodermis is beneath the skin. It is not skin, okay? So it is not skin. It's also called the subcutaneous layer, meaning below the skin. Subcutaneous, remember, means skin, so sub meaning below, or sub -Q. Uh, It's deeper, hypo meaning below, so hypo meaning below the dermis. So it's located beneath the skin. It's a major storage site for fat, adipose tissue. Um, and if you talk about, uh, you know, you talk about a subcutaneous injection, this is where you inject the drugs. You do a sub-Q uh, injection into the hypodermic. So you use a hypodermic needle. So that's where that comes from. Hi so the hypodermis, you uh, inject things into the hypodermis using a hypodermic needle into it and make a subcutaneous or sub-Q injection. Okay, accessory structure of the skin. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, various glands. So we're going to talk about uh, the pseudoreferous and sebaceous glands, we're talking about hair and hair follicles, nails, fingerprints. We're also going to talk about vitamin D and skin skin cancer at the end. So just to, since we're talking about skin, I thought it'd be really good to talk about the skin cancer. So we'll talk about that as well. And next slide. So here's skin and skin structures. This is the picture of your book. And let's see. So there's hair shafts up here. You have so out of a lot of your skin, you have hair sticking out. You look at the back of your hand. Uh, sometimes you have to look closely. Some people have finer hair than others. Uh, you got hair on top of your head. So coming, so there's hair coming out of the scalp. I've shaved off my beard, so I had, used to have a beard. Um, so you know, guys have hair, uh, thicker hair growing out of their faces. Uh, then uh, you also have pores of sweat gland, sweat gland ducts. Sorry about that. And uh, there's other things in here, but what I wanted to point out was here's the epidermis. So that's the top layer. Then we have the dermis. So that whole layer there, going from here down to there. Then we have the hypodermis. And that's not part of the skin. Okay. And a couple other things to point out. Um, these round things here, all this stuff here and down here. That's all supposed to be fat. That's what those are. Okay. Now these yellow lines here and there, those are nerves, and they're going up into nerve endings. So here's a here's a nerve ending up here, and this and this is a muscle. Okay. So this is this is right here is a muscle. This is so you have the hair and the hair shaft. There's a hair shaft. Here's a hair shaft, and there's a hair shaft. And there's another hair shaft. So you see all those. And so this right here is a sebaceous gland. And it's um, at the this little lumpy thing here, and this one here, and this guy over here. Those are all sebaceous glands. And those deposit oil onto the hair shaft as it's growing out of the hair follicle, which is down here. And so you have the hair follicle um, and the hair root. And we're talking about the parts of that um, later on and what else we have here so we have some fat down here down here and we have some sensory nerve endings here well these sorry these are neuromuscular junctions here and here and here so those activate that muscle and what it, and that muscle is going to pull on the hair follicle and make the hair erect 
So, uh, so that's when you get goosebumps in your hairs stand up on end to try to keep you keep you warm. And there's also this structure here. This is a sweat gland here. And there's nerve endings that come up and around it, and it'll help uh, help uh, activate the sweat gland. And there's also um, there's also this uh, this structure here. This is a sensory receptor. We'll talk about it later on. So, but just remember, it looks kind of like an onion. So, and then the red and blue parts here. Uh, those are all those are all um, arteries and veins running through the dermal layer. And you notice there are no arteries and veins up in the epidermal layer. So there's the artery and veins, and they stop. So the epidermis is a vas a vascular. Okay. So what does that tell you? It means it's made of epithelial tissue. So all right. Next slide. So here is a um, cross section through through the skin showing the epidermis up here and the dermis. And there's two layers of the of the dermis. There's the papillary layer and the reticular layer. The papillary layer has these things called dermal papillae. These uh, so these are structures that they stick up like this underneath the epidermal layer. So you have the epidermis, and it kind of follows. And there's there's different layers of the epidermis. And we'll talk about those. There's a there's a layer that's on top of the dermal papillae. So you have the papillary layer of the dermis, reticular layer of the dermis, and you notice all that um, stuff. And you may recognize that from the tissues section. Remember how we talked about how your skin uh, we can you can move it back and forth in all different directions, and that's due to dense irregular collagen or connective tissue. So that's all dense, irregular, not collagen, but connective tissue. And then we have the hypodermis down here. Subcutaneous, it's not part of the skin. And you notice there's all these, these round, all these little round bubble, bubble, bubble kind of things down here. See all those? So, and they're all clear. And that and remember we talked about um, when you fix a slide, you, the fixative you use usually washes away the fat, so you're left with this clear zone. So those are all adipose cells. That's adipose tissue. So you notice there's a whole lot of adipose tissue down in the hypodermis. There's some adipose tissue up in the reticular layer, but most of it's down in the hypodermal layer. Okay, next slide. So the epidermis, what is it composed of? It's composed of keratinized stratified squamous epithelial cells. So what is keratinized? Keratinized mean, means made of protein, keratin, it's hard. Stratified means multiple layers. And squamous means flat cell, right? And it's epithelium. So you have multiple layers of these flat cells. So that's keratinized, stratified, squamous epithelial cells. Cell types you find in the epidermis, you have keratinocytes. Those are the keratinized, stratified, squamous epithelial cells. You also have, um, that's most of the cells. Then you have melanocytes. So you have melanocytes. Those, uh, uh, so melanocytes produce a, a protein called melanin, which is, uh, gives, gives your skin a uh, darker tone the more melanin you have. And then you have uh, Langerhans cells, which are immune system cells, and Merkel cells, which are a receptor for touch. They're called tactile receptor or tactile epithelial cells. So there's going to be a nerve ending attached to those. And those are the only um, receptors that are actually in the epidermis. The rest of them are in the dermal layer. So we'll talk about those here in a second. So there are five layers of the epidermis. There's the, the bottom layer is the stratum basal, so basal layer. The next layer up is stratum spinosum. And I'm going down, but these are actually from the bottom up. So this is layer, this is the bottom layer. And we'll, I'll show you this in a second. So it's stratum basal, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, and stratum corneum. Stratum corneum is the outside layer. And these, uh, so stratum basal is a single row of cells. There's a basement membrane underneath it, separating it from the dermal papillae. There are uh, keratinocyte stem cells in there, so they produce more of the keratinocytes, which then produce a lot of protein, and the cell dies as it reaches up the surface. It also has melanocytes, uh, Langerhans cells, and Merkel cells in that stratum basal layer. Stratum spinosum 
is about eight to 10 rows, mostly keratinocytes. They're dividing maybe once a day. They're still alive. Stratum granulosum is about three to five rows. They're flattened cells. They're beginning to die. There's no dividing cells in that layer. So the only dividing cells are in the basal and the spinosum layer because, remember, if you have epithelium, you have space on one side, and that's the outside of you. So you have this um, skin epidermal layer, which is all epithelial tissue. So underneath it, you have the vascular, um, you have the uh, arteries and veins, so you have vasculature underneath. So as, that's, as, that, as the nutrients diffuse up through here, the farther it has to go, the farther, the farther away these cells are, the less nutrients they're going to get, and they start, they start to die. So as they get farther and farther away from the nutrients, they die and they slough off. So and that's and that sloughing off those dead cells are what makes a lot of dust in your uh, in your house. So pleasant thought there. So um, let's see. So granulosum, you have uh, three to five rows of flattened cells are beginning to die. The lucidum layer, they're all uh, they're all dead. Three to five rows of flat dead keratinocytes. In specimens of of skin, uh, they it looks like a clear zone. Um, it may stain some in slides. And then a stratum corneum is a thick layer of 25 to 30 rows of squamous dead keratinocytes. It's a tough layer. It's water repellent. It, uh, and at the top layer will slough off. And then it's replaced by cells from the underlying layer, the adjacent layer, the stratum lucidum. So those, it keeps pushing new cells up, uh, up to the top as the top ones slough off. Next slide. So here's the different layers. And we have a mnemonic to remember this one. Boy says, girl, looks cute. So we have stratum basal, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, and stratum corneum. So basal, boy, spinosum says, granulosum, girl, lucidum, looks, corneum, cute. So it makes it a lot easier to remember these layers. Going from deep layer, stratum basal, here, up through the layer, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, and then stratum corneum. So boy says girl looks cute. Down below here, this this deep layer. So that's all. This is the that's a dermal that's a dermal papilla there going up in, and there's another dermal papilla going up down below. And underneath this uh, stratum basal, there is a little look right there. There's a basement membrane. Right, under, right underneath the uh, stratum basal. So separating it from the underlying um, connective tissue layer. And the connective tissue layer that's gonna have underlying epidermal or epithelial tissue is gonna be areolar connective tissue. So this first part up here is all gonna be areolar connective tissue. If this is epithelial, then you gotta have the areolar connective tissue underneath. So that's the first part of the, uh, the dermal layer underneath the epidermal layer. All right, next slide. So here's another diagram. This is out of your books, figure 7-4. So here's a block that was taken out of skin, and here's what it looks like. So you have the keratinocytes, you have them sloughing off. You have the stratum, uh, so we'll start at the bottom, stratum basal here, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, lucidum, and corneum. And stratum lucidum is only visible, you only find it in thick skin. And we're going to talk about what thick skin versus thin skin here in a minute. Here in a minute. But it's kind of a clearish sort of zone, so you can see that like right there. It looks rather clear right there. So that'd be the stratum lucidum layer. It's like it's um, light shining through it is the best way to describe that. So we have stratum granulosum there, and the spinosum layer is here. And the basal is here. So that's that's boy says girl looks. And then this whole layer up through here. Down to there. Cute. There. So and these are the cells that are at the bottom, the stratum basal layer, they are kerat keratinocytes, they're keratinocyte stem, stem cells. And so they stay down there, they make more cells, they divide, and more cells go up and push all these layers up and off your body. So this is the dermis down here, so there and there. So that's so we have the epidermis is what we're talking about in this whole upper section here, and then we have the dermis down below. Um, we're also talking about the tactile Merkel cells. We'll talk about those here in a, 
here in a little bit. Um, and let's see. Then we have uh, also show there's a melanocyte over here that will produce melanin. And this, they show a dividing keratinocyte right there. So, okay. So there's, there's figure 7-4 out of your book. Next slide. Okay, the major division is the skin. This is thick skin versus thin skin. So on the left, we have thick skin. This is what thick skin looks like. This is thick skin. So your stratum corneum layer is very thick. It has all the same, same other layers, basal, spinosum, granulosum, and, and lucidum has all those layers. Uh, if you go over to thin skin on the right-hand side over here, you have your corneal layer, stratum corneum, is, very, is a lot thinner than it is in the thick skin. So that's the, one of the main differences there. You also don't see a stratum lucidum in this layer, you go straight, straight to the granulosum layer. So, so you have, so you don't have, so boy says, so boy says girl cute. So the granulosum layer, spinosum, and basal. So, so boy says girl cute. So you don't have the L in there. So, and thin skin. In thick skin, boy says girl looks cute. So it makes a lot more sense. But anyway, so where is th thin skin and thick skin? Thick skin is found on the palms of the hand and soles of the feet. So as you might expect, you need a lot of protection here because you have a lot of, you're picking up things, you're walking on your feet. So it's, you have a lot of abrasion that's happening on those surfaces. So you need some thicker skin there. Thicker skin, you don't have that, as thick skin on the back of your hand. You don't need it as much on the back of your hand because you're not using that to pick up things all day. You're using your fingers and the palms of your hand and on the soles of your feet, you're walking around on those all the time. So. So, uh, so thick skin, like on the hands, on your hand, uh, palms of your hands, soldier feet, has all five layers. Thin skin, which is most everywhere else, does not have a visible stratum lucidum. Uh, probably has a little tiny bit of you know layer of that there, but it's uh, it's not it's just never visible, and has a thinner stratum corneum than thick skin. Okay, next slide. So the dermis, it's highly vascularized because the epiderm layer is not. So you need gotta have Blood, uh, blood supply in there, and it allows nutrients to diffuse from the dermis into the avascular epidermis. Hair follicles, sweat glands, sebaceous glands are all derived from epithelial tissue, and those extend down in the, into the dermis. So the actually the stratum basal is part of uh, those hair follicles, sweat glands, sebaceous glands, and it like extends down into there and creates uh, or an extend down there, but it created that tissue that formed the, uh, the hair follicles, sweat glands, sebaceous glands. You also find nerves and lymphatic vessels in this layer because uh, lymphatic vessels, because lymphatic vessels drain off fluid from places, and so you always need a, a drainage system when you're bringing in fluid from the um, uh, arteries and vein, or the arteries and fluid le leaks out and goes into the um, the surrounding uh, areolar connective tissue, and you don't want if you get too much there, you would start swelling, so you need a good lymphatic system to drain that. So. The dermis is divided into three regions. The papillary region, which has dermal papillae, and the reticular region. Reticular region is deeper and thicker than the other regions, has mostly dense, irregular connective tissue. Okay, And there's also a little bit of adipose tissue uh, in that region as well. And let's see, we also have, um, let's see. So the dermal papillae are finger-like projections of the papillary region and those extend um, into the epidermis and they cause uh, epidermal ridges. And what are epidermal ridges? Those are fingerprints. So you have whorls and um, you have whorls and loops and all those kind of things. It also, and those, those ridges help increase the surface area. They help in increase friction and grip and sweat glands deposit secretions onto these ridges. And so you have and so those secretions, those leave fingerprints. Those are the oils that you leave behind. So if you touch something, like if I, I touch uh, a piece of glass, you'll be able to see those, uh, those whorls on, uh, on my fingerprints. The papillary region is the thin uh, layer of uh, areolar connective tissue that's deep to the stratum basal of the epidermis. So it's right beneath the stratum basal and the basement membrane of the, base, of the stratum basal. So the papillary region, then we have the reticular region, and we're going to look at those in a second. Then we have beneath the skin, we have the hypodermis, and that is not skin. So just remember, hypodermis is not considered skin. It is beneath the skin. Skin is dermis. It's a major site for adipose tissue. So your cutaneous fat. Um, so when we when we eat a lot and we get fat, 
like I have eaten way too much, uh, especially the last few weeks. Um, there's been some stress <laughs> with trying to do all this online stuff. And so chocolate has become my friend and my foe also. So anyway, uh, but I have acquired some sub, some uh, subcutaneous fat. Uh, so that's, uh, or sometimes called cutaneous fat. It's actually in the hypodermis mostly. So um, next slide. Okay, so here's the skin. We have the epidermal layer and the dermal layer. And the dermal layer is composed of the papillary layer with dermal papillae and the reticular layer. So here's the epidermis here. You recognize all that there. So you have the stratum basal. So boy says girl looks cute. So stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, and uh, stratum corneum. And this may not have stratum lucidum in it. I was looking for that to see if I saw it. I don't see it really. So, But we have in the dermal layer, so this is the dermal layer below here. We have the papillary layer and the reticular layer here. This is the dermal. That's the dermal layer. Oops. Layer. There we go. Get rid of that. Okay. So dermal layer is the, is the papillary layer and the reticular layer. So here's a dermal papilla. It's this connective tissue sticking up in there. And here's another papilla. And here's another papilla. And you can see these papillae here. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. And they fit up into these little, it's like they fit up into these grooves. These things form around each other. So you can see how these things fit together here and here. Okay. So that's, so that's the dermal papillae sticking up into and the epidermis sticking down around it. So it, so it, it kind of it increases uh, in a way the surface area of of the um, the epidermis sticking around the dermal papillae, so that you have so you have blood vessels go up in the dermal papillae, feeding this epidermal layer that's around it. So that that that's really one of the re main reasons for the dermal papillae stick to stick up in there and create give a lot of surface area for the nutrients, oxygen and other nutrients to flow into the epidermis and waste products to flow back out. So. Uh, we also have, um, let's see, the reticular, reticular layer. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm not going to talk about it too much here. I'm just going to point out, you have some have blood vessels here, and you notice that they go up into the dermal papillae up there. And you also have, this is a, this yellow here is a, is a nerve ending. It goes up to a Meissner's, Meissner's corpuscle. And then we also have a lamellated or pacinian corpuscle here. And that's also a nerve nerve fiber going up to, to that. So those are both sensory receptors. We'll talk about those in a second. Then it points out here we have a whole bunch of collagen fibers, connective tissue uh, in this dermal layer. All right, next slide. So here's a um, section through the skin photomicrograph showing, uh, once again, the epidermis and the dermis. And here's the papillary layer of the dermis. And you see the dermal papillae sticking up into the epidermis. Then you have the reticular layer of the dermis, and you notice the large amounts of dense, irregular connective tissue in the dermis. See all, all of that. Then below the dermis, you have the hypodermis, and notice large amounts of adipose tissue that's down there. So that's all fat tissue there. So you have the epidermis, the pap papillary layer of the dermis, reticular layer of the dermis, and then you have dermal papillae that stick up into the epidermis, and then you have the hypodermis down below the dermis, down below the skin. And remember, hypodermis is not skin. It is below the skin. All right. Next slide. <clears throat> so accessory structures of the skin. We have glands we're going to talk about next, and there are two types of glands, sudoriferous glands and sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands secrete oil. They're grease, sebacey meaning greasy. Oil glands are found around hair, follicle, hair follicles. They deposit something called sebum. That's the um, sebum is the greasy or oily substance onto the neck of the hair follicle. And this oily follicle, this oily substance um, lubricates the skin and the hair. The sudoriferous glands, there's uh, several types of those. There's what's called the eccrine glands, the apocrine glands, 
And then there are modified sudoriferous glands called the ceruminous glands and the mammary, the mammary glands. So we have the eccrine, which is the sweat glands, and those are the most common type. Those deposit sweat onto the epithelial or epidermal surface. Apocrine glands, those are found only in the uh, axilla, so your arm on your armpits, uh, genital area, areola, um, and they produce a more viscous secretion than the eccrine glands. Similar composition is deposited on the distal end of the hair root, and it's odorless until it's broken down by bacteria, and that's what gives you your body odor smell. So it's the bacteria on the surface of the skin that break down the apocrine, apocrine gland uh, secretions. And these glands are actually um, more correctly referred to as apoecrine glands because they do they have some eccrine secretions as well as some apocrine secretions with them. Um, the modified sudoriferous glands, uh, they're, these are usually apocrine glands. Your book classifies points uh, says that they are holocrine glands. We're going to talk about what that means in a second, but they are really a uh, apocrine glands. And the ceruminous glands, these secrete a waxy substance. So you think about earwax, that's what that is. The ceruminous gland is secreting that wax. And that wax, <clears throat> wax um, it's, it's very thick. And so basically insects get stuck in it and other foreign substances get stuck in it so they don't they can't like stay in your ear and live in your ear they get stuck in it and they they, they die and then you can like and you get the earwax is, is constantly coming out so um and there are pictures you can go actually look this up online you can actually see some you know, there's a guy who goes into a dock and says hey I've something in my ear. It's been there for a while. I don't know what it is. For like how long? Like a week, or a week or two. And so they go and they look in there and look in his ear, and there's a little spider sitting there looking out at him. So he's been living, living there for a little while. So and luckily the spider just kind of walked out, and they so they were able to get rid of him. But uh, there are <laughs> you have these big openings on the side of your head. So just remember, you know, try to keep your ears clean. So but you don't have to do um, uh, like ear washes, those kind of things, unless you. Uh, have a lot of wax build up that you that you um that you or a lot of wax that you secrete personally but uh in general that's not really necessary for, the wax does move on out as long as you keep yourself hydrated and you, you know, have enough um fluid in yourself to create a you know a nice fluid wax to, to move out of your ears mammary glands found on the breasts they synthesize and secrete breast milk after uh, hormonal stimulation specific hormones and those mammary glands um they um, they are apocrine glands, so uh, they are modified sudoriferous glands. So most of the glands are uh, they're really apocrine or modified um, apocrine apocrine glands. The eccrine glands are the uh, ones that the, the common sweat gland that we talk about. All right, next slide. Okay, so let's just do a brief uh, overview of the ex exocrine glands of the skin. Exocrine means the products are secreted into a duct that is then sent somewhere else. As opposed to, we're gonna talk about, uh, we talked about endocrine glands where the substance is secreted into the bloodstream. So exocrine glands, sudoriferous glands, you have eccrine, which secrete products into the duct. Apocrine glands also secrete into the duct, but it pinches off the top part of the cell and they secrete. So here's the difference. Here's a merocrine or uh, what is the eccrine glands, merocrine type secretion here. And so a little vesicle comes to the cell, cell surface and then bl uh, blends with the plasma membrane and releases the contents out into the lumen of the duct. The apocrine gland here pinches off this top part. And, the, and so that flows down through the duct and that's what, that, and that's the secretion that goes to the duct. Holocrine gland uh, is, the, is the third type of, of exocrine gland. And though in that case, the whole cell disintegrates and uh, releases the entire contents of the cell uh, of whatever it's made to be the secretion. So um, the apocrine glands in the body are usually, uh, are actually ap apoecrine glands because they have both eccrine and apocrine secretions. So um, the, uh, and the type of gland, the eccrine glands are, are mericlin, mericrine secretions, mericrine type secretions. So we have, and this is a picture of your book, so we have cells undergoing mericrine secretion. This is sweat glands here. That'd be their sweat glands. 
And I'll make a bad joke here. Don't sweat the slide too much because I'm not going to ask you the difference between eccrine and apocrine and holocrine glands. And spa um, but you need to know, um, you don't need to know about merocrine and apocrine secretions, but you do need to know, I, but I need to describe this to you so you understand that there's a difference between those and what that difference is. So otherwise, I'm just, they're just words. So then you have apocrine uh, sweat glands. And those sweat glands are actually an apoecrine gland because, as it shows here, you have apocrine uh, sweat and merocrine secretion. Um, so going into the, um, so you have both both types of secretions going going on. And then spacious glands, the um, the book says holocrine secretions, and that's not correct. There are actually apocrine secretions uh, that are going on there. Um, they are modified. Um, Apocrine glands, the cells do not rupture, so the book is not correct on that point. Um, but, so in the body, all these glands are, these are all, all apocrine glands. They're modified to do, to rather than uh, screen water and salts, they are modified to either produce uh, a whack, uh, an oily substance like a like in the sebaceous gland, or um, a, a um, somewhat more viscous solution like an apocrine gland. Uh, Apocrine glands or the sweat glands, apocrine glands would be more like mammary glands. So you have more uh, more of a um, you you produce the uh, the cells in the gland are producing uh, milk, and so you're producing some proteins. So that's why it's a modified um, production. It's not not all just water and some salts. It also includes proteins. And then you have your regular normal sweat glands over here that are doing undergoing merocrine secretion. So those are eccrine glands. Um, and okay, next slide. So other accessory structures, again, you have hair follicles. And the hair follicle has several parts. You have a hair bulb, you have a papilla of the hair, you have the matrix, you have the connective tissue sheath, and an erector pili muscle. So a hair bulb contains the papilla of the hair and the matrix. So a hair bulb looks like this. And then you have a hair sticking down. Oops, we went a little far there. The side. So here's your hair, hair shaft sticking up here. So you have the matrix is, and, and this is derived from the stratum basal of the epidermis, and it forms new new hair cells to be added to the base of the hair root. So you have hair cells that are produced, and those have keratin in them, and those become part of the hair shaft, and then it grows grows out, and those cells die. So you have a connective tissue sheath around the outside of this, around the outside of this, and then you go up to the surface. Okay, so it's connective tissue on the outside here, and then we have an erector pili muscle, which will be a muscle sticking off like this, going, going up to the side. And there's also sebaceous glands that are sticking off here too. So we're going to look at those all here in a second. Next slide. So we're going to look at the sebaceous, at the hair follicle here. So here's your hair bulb, is this structure here. So down here is where the matrix and the uh, the base, uh, the whole base of the the papilla of the um, of the hair follicle is. So here's your hair follicle. Here's your papilla. Is that little part sticking up there? And so here, so that's that's our whole hair bulb there. So this is the papilla there. Just like the dermal papilla, it's a little thing that sticks up into the root of the hair. You have the hair root, and let's see, is, is this whole bit down here below the skin. The hair, hair shaft is above it's above the skin, so hair roots below the skin. Then you also have um, the uh, papilla of the hair, and it's the part that's sticking up here, some blood vessels going up in here. And then we also have, let's see what else I'm missing. Oh, sebaceous gland. So that's what this gland is here. And a sebaceous gland here. And then we have the erector pili muscle, which is this guy right here. He goes down. So you have this little tendon here, a little tendon is part here, down here at the bottom, and a little muscle in the middle. And you notice there's little nerves that are innervating that muscle too. So it tells it when to contract. Then you have a couple other things I'm going to point out here. We have uh, an eccrine sweat gland. So that's your normal sweat gland. That's this guy here. And you notice the duct goes all the way to the surface. 
And then we have an apocrine sweat gland. And this comes up here and it goes and deposits its stuff up here somewhere around in this area somewhere. Uh, it's depositing onto the hair root, uh, which is going to provide um, that um, a little bit more um, viscous kind of uh, um, secretion to help uh, to help the hair and help the, help the hair shaft as well as the uh, um, add some secretions to the skin. And uh, sebaceous gland is adding oil to the hair shaft. So those are the three main uh, glands that, you, that you're going to see in the skin. There's also a couple of things. You have this Meissner's corpuscle here, and there's also another deeper one. So Meissner's corpuscle is, is for touch, a tactile receptor, and this detects vibrations, the Pacinian corpuscle. So we'll get to those in a second. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> We're going to talk about the, the hair shaft and all that stuff for the, for the next few slides. So, so back to your original picture that's in your books, so the epi epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. And you notice that the hair, uh, the hair shaft, the hair root, so this is the shaft, the hair root, and all the rest of it is down into the, down goes uh, into the dermis. Sometimes it stays in the dermis, but it, uh, but it often goes down into the hypodermis region. And so you have these have blood vessels going up into the papilla. You have the hair bulb here. It's kind of like planting a bulb, like a tulip bulb, in a way. And then you have um, the hair in the middle. That's what this long part is here. So I'm draw on top of it. That's the so that's the hair that's growing up through the middle there. And then you have sebaceous glands on the outside here, there, and here. And then you have your erector pili muscle here. So we talked about that. And there's your nerve endings. Nerve endings, and those would be neuromuscular junctions. So here's your hair root and your hair follicle, and this is pointing out that these are receptors down these uh, these nerves coming in here are hair follicle receptors coming in there. Okay, all right, next slide. Here's another cross section through here. This is showing the hair uh, papilla here. With the matrix, that's the whole thing there. The fill is the whole thing. The matrix is this um, is this layer here, and then we have the medulla of the hair. We have the cortex here, so the medulla, the cortex, and the outer layer is the cuticle. Okay, so the hair shaft is made up of the medulla, which is the uh, innermost layer, the cortex with the next layer out, and the cuticle, which is the outside layer. And let's see, uh, anything else on here? Uh, we have dermal root sheath. This is, this is like connective tissue on the outside here, and the epithelial root sheath. So epithelial tissue is out here on the outside, and the dermal root uh, sheath is on the outside, is outside of that. So it's providing this connective tissue covering around the hair shaft as it grows. You also have some melanocytes down here because you got to give some color to the hair. So, and then um, let's see, anything else? Um, yeah, this is showing the dermal root sheath. So you have this dermal tissue around it outside. Then you have epithelial tissue, which is creating the um, the uh, the hair shaft, and that is an extension of the basal uh, stratum basal down into this hair shaft, and it's creating the, the, the hair. So, in a way, you can kind of think of uh, so you have the skin, you have cell, the ba stratum basal producing cells, and all those cells going up in layers, and those layers sloughing off. Well, the hair is similar to this. You have stratum basal down here. It's forming cells, making cells that are part of this hair shaft. You have different layers, and so it's a similar in a logical kind of sense of a structure. You have layers of, of the hair shaft and the, the hair shaft grows and it extrudes and then the hair uh, will fall out eventually and start making a new one. But um, it's kind of a similar layer. You have these layers of cells producing um, producing this, uh, this structure. Okay, I think that's pretty much all for this slide. Okay, next slide. Okay, here's another, uh, uh, here's a cross-section through the skin with different uh, 
different layers. So we have the stratum corneum, stratum spinosum, uh, stratum basal, um, just showing uh, three of the layers there. They didn't talk about the stratum, uh, stratum granulosum. Did and this is thin, thinner skin or thin skin, so it doesn't have a stratum lucidum in it. So and we have the dermal papilla, and then we have an erector pili muscle. That's what this structure is here. There and going up through there, and that's coming down to this uh, to to this guy here. And remember, when you section through something, you're not not always sectioning directly through. Uh, all the way down evenly through a hair follicle. So you're gonna, you, some of them are pointing different ways and slightly different ways, or you're get, getting different layers. So that, so we got, we got lucky with this one right here. We have a, uh, we have the dermal papilla here, and then we have the, this is the, so the hair follicle. And we got a sebaceous gland. That's what this is here. And here's another sebaceous gland here. We have a dermal layer here. That's the dermal. Layer on the outside of the um, hair follicle, and we have the hair shaft here. And let's see, anything else? Um, and we're down in the reticular layer of the dermis of dermis. That's terrible. Hold on. Of the Dermis. Okay. And let's see if anything else I want to show you. I don't think it's not much, too much. There's, if you'll notice down here, there's these two structures down here. These are proscenium corpuscles. They're down uh, closer into the hypodermal layer down there. And then down below, you'll see actually there's skeletal muscle down below. So you have this subcutaneous layer down here with adipose tissue. This is the hypodermis. So proscenium corpuscles tend to end up down the hypodermal, dermal, jump, uh, kind of that layer uh, in that kind of area. And let's see. So that's uh, that's that slide. Let's go on to the next one. Oh, here. Oh, wait. One more thing. So yeah, this is showing the hair bulb, hair bulb and papilla. I forgot. I was trying to f remember one other thing to show you on that slide. All right. And okay. Next slide. Here's another slide showing. Uh, Hair bulbs, so you can see those are like bulbs, like you plant a tulip bulb. The papilla of the hair, the part that sticks up in there. The hair root, then the hair follicles, the whole thing, and then the sebaceous gland there. There'll be that, and there'll be one there. Here's like parts of one here. Here's more here. So then there's one here. So those are all sebaceous glands. All right, next slide. Here's a, and here's what a sebaceous gland looks like in cross section. So you see the sebaceous gland here, and these sebaceous gland cells. So you can see little dots there, the nucleus. So uh, let's find a good one. Here's here's a cell. Here's a cell. So you start seeing these different cells. Here's a cell. Oops. Here's a cell. Um, here's a cell. I'm just randomly picking some cells. So you can see all these cells are inside the sebaceous gland. And then here's the hair shaft down here and the hair follicle. So the hair shaft is this part in the middle. And the hair follicle is this whole guy all the way around. Okay. And then you have your epidermis. And then down below the epidermis is the dermis. All right, next slide. So hair, where is it found? Well, it's found all over the body except for palms. Soles your feet, your lips, and parts of the external genitalia. Uh, you have the shaft, which projects from the skin surface, the root, which extends into the dermis, and occasionally, and sometimes, you know, fairly often into the hypodermis. The hair is, um, the hair itself is composed of um, three layers. There's the cuticle, the cortex, the middle layer, and the medulla is the inner layer. So uh, the medulla, the cortex, and the cuticle. So, it's the cuticle. There's the cortex. And there's the medulla. And one of the interesting things I thought I'd point out to you, cross, if you do a cross section of hair, like how do you get straight, wavy, curly hair? Well, straight hair, if you do a cross section of it, it's round. Okay, I can't draw a circle. 
Wavy hair is more of a more of an oval, and curly hair is more of a really flat oval. And then coily hair is really flat oval. Okay? So that's the difference in straight, wavy, curly, and coily hair. Next slide. If you look at it in cross section, here's actual cross sections of hair. So this is uh, this is round. So those would be that would be straight hair on, on the left here. This is straight. And the middle slide is oval. So we have wavy hair. And the right, you have curly or kinky hair. And these are flattened ovals. So that's a flattened oval there on the on the right side. Okay. Next slide. And so the outside of the hair, you have um, the cuticle layers. So you have the medulla in the middle, the cortex around it, and the cuticle layers. And just to point out, um, the cortex and medulla is where your color is. Okay. And so if so, what happens if you have these uh, cuticle scales? Those are the those are the cells that are that are there, and they kind of overlap. So they have these edges that come together. Well, as the hair ages you get worn and fractured edges on those. So, so what you do, you use conditioner. And conditioner, what it does is it fills in those little broken edges and those little spaces. So it makes the hair seem smooth again. So you treat it with conditioner here and you get this conditioner layer uh, that kind of sticks to the, to the hair, to the hair, uh, hair shaft as it's sticking out of the, out of the scalp. It's, uh, so it, it'll help smooth it and, uh, and, and keep it from, from fraying uh, quite as much. So that's what, that's what conditioner's for. Next slide. Here's a scanning electron micrograph of a human hair shaft. You can see the cuticle layer and all these, uh, all these overlapping um, cells here. So you can see all those overlapping the cells. I'll do that, so... Next slide. Here's the, uh, the cuticle, cortex, and medulla. So you can see the cuticle there. This is scanning electrons, so it's cuticle. Cortex. And the medulla. The middle inner part there. Okay. Next slide.